Take 17. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jillian Ward, and we are here with my husband, Scott Conway, and our two puppies that at some point in the video you may see in the background. There's one of them. <laughs> and we'll show that Hank is going to make an appearance. So in this series, we're going to talk about the road to recovery after a debilitating injury. Mm -hmm. And the injury that we're talking about is Scott's back injury. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background leading up to it, and then I'm going to allow Scott to tell his story. She'll tell it for me better, I'm <laughs> I sure. Know, I'm going to interrupt a bunch. <laughs> so several years ago when we first met, I introduced Scott to strength training. Right. Previously to that, he was an endurance athlete. He was. He was an Ironman triathlete, and his modes of exercise were what? Uh, running, biking, swimming, uh, because of the way I was tested at work, there were pull-ups and you know push-ups, so basic body weight exercises. And he came into my gym to attend a nutrition lecture. I did. And I convinced him to be part of the, a strength training program that I was teaching. Correct. It was, it was the first for, uh, first for anything even remotely close to that. And he was, what did I say, over the age of 45 at the time? Uh, yes, I was much older, yes. Okay. And had never really done any weight training before? No. And fell absolutely in love with it? Yes, that is a, that is a very safe way of saying <laughs> it. So it, uh, it definitely uh, opened up a new passion in my life. Would you say you were fit when you came into the gym? I would say I was broken when I came into the gym. Uh, I had a lot of overuse injuries that were leading to a lot of biomechanical adaptations, none of which were, were any good and it was all just getting worse. But you still did well on your physical fitness tests, is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, I was doing whatever I had to do in order to get uh, that perfect physical fitness and combat fitness test scores in the Marine Corps. So that began Scott's journey into strength training. And what were some of your early goals? Uh, there were aspirations of a 500 pound deadlift, a 405 pound squat, and a 315 pound bench. And again, mind you, Scott had never done any strength training no. before stepping into the gym that day. Correct. There's your awkwardly long <laughs> pause. <laughs> I don't know if she wants me to talk or, or what. But. So let's fast forward a little bit. So um, I am Scott's, in addition to his wife, I am his training partner and I always serve, I've always served as his coach. Both uh, strength, conditioning and nutrition. Yes, and there's some complexity, some complexity to that. And I would say even more so when you are coaching the person that you are married to. Correct. Because there are times where you don't really know if it's your is it your spouse talking to you or is it your coach or client talking to you? And we've had to make sure that what happens in the gym stays in the gym. Yes. Because it gives me the permission to say what's on my mind and it gives her the permission to motivate me appropriately. <laughs> and oftentimes, one of the questions Scott will ask me is, who am I speaking to? Am I speaking to Coach Jillian or am I speaking to my wife Jillian? Right. And sometimes we need to draw a distinction between both of those things. Correct. But before we go off on a crazy tangent, we're gonna give you a little bit more background about where Scott was at at the time and what led up to the injury. Okay. So will you share a little bit about what you do or did for a living and the physical expectations of you? So my last job in uh, my Marine Corps career, I was the professor of Naval Science at Norwich University. So I was in charge of uh, training the Naval ROTC or Reserve Officer Training Corps midshipmen uh, to become either Navy ensigns or Marine Corps second lieutenants. And in, uh, in our profession, particularly in that position, there was a lot of leadership by example. So when it came to physical fitness, I had to be, uh, I had to look the part and I had to be able to act the part. I had to be able to perform uh, on the physical training field. I had to be able to perform well on the physical fitness test and all aspects of that. So there was a, a very high physical demand in that position, not just in the gym or, or during the test, but also during some of the training events that we did uh, in the, the hills and mountains of Vermont. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you have throughout your career, your 30 year career in the Marine Corps, taken great pride in maxing the physical fitness tests and upholding the highest standard of physical fitness. Well, there, there is, uh, that's probably the subject of a, 
of another video series, but I would say in the second half of my career, that was absolutely the case. You know, it wasn't just enough for me to do well. I wanted to do the best on the test and, and get the perfect score. And in your previous job when we were up in Vermont, how much on a daily basis was expected of you physically on the job? So we would have physical training sessions with the midshipmen, uh, and then that would be two or three times a week. Uh, sometimes we would have more involved physical activities that weren't necessarily measured physical fitness tests or performance, but they were field training exercises. Whether it was a conditioning march that was three, six, or nine miles, uh, or whether it was kind of an endurance gut check of uh, a 24 to 48 hour field training exercise where it was uh, little sleep, poor uh, or, or not as much food as you would optimally want, uh, but sustained activity throughout the whole time. So it varied, but generally speaking, uh, it was three, three times a week were pretty high demands. And in addition to training with the midshipmen and what your demands were, at work, what were the other demands at Vermont in terms of training with me <laughs> and the lifestyle in Vermont, the physical right. demands of the hard winters? So we trained, depending on what we were doing in that particular time, we routinely trained three or more times uh, in the gym uh, or just some sort of physical training. And then- Three uh, more times being full body strength sessions. Correct where the basic barbell lifts were the main focal point of correct, our training. Correct, correct. Squatting, deadlifting, pressing, benching, and accessory. Yes. Okay, and with then heavy the, weights. With heavy weights. And then because we were living in Vermont and we have a very active dog uh, with Hank, you know, we were going up in the, in the mountains hiking for two or more hours a time, easily twice a week. And what other physical demands were there? throughout the winter. <laughs> <laughs> She's asking me a very leading question. Uh, the Probably the most demanding thing that, that I had to do throughout the winters of Vermont was snow removal. Um, it would be anywhere from, you know, two inches that just came down within an hour to when we uh, would come home from traveling and there'd be 18 inches of snow waiting for me to, to get rid of in a very large driveway. And then, oh, by the way, getting the backyard in a condition, a condition where Lucy could actually go to the bathroom with her legs that are about this long. So digging all the tunnels. Digging the all the tunnels <laughs> uh, and, and the paths for the dogs. And there were the trip slips and falls, were there not? There nice indeed conditions? were. Uh, there was a time in particular that we were walking right by the university and where the snow runoff had, had melted and created a little a uh, little wet spot and then it froze and then I fell down and my legs took Jillian's legs out and she <laughs> fell on top of me or I fell on top of you. I don't know. It was a train wreck and, and I'm sure it was pretty funny to see, but you know, it, we were lucky on that and no one really got hurt. So in addition to the physical demands of the actual job, the physical demands of Vermont, the physical demands of keeping up with your wife in the gym. Correct. <laughs> Or just keeping the house warm, you know, going out and constantly getting wood for the wood yeah, stove. Firewood, yep. chopping wood, carrying the wood. There was also for you in your role, wasn't there an expectation of having a physical standard, even in terms of your appearance that you had to keep up? Absolutely. So um, explain that a little bit for us. So it's one thing to be able to perform physically, but in the Marines, we take great pride in our, our appearance and how we wear our uniform. And then as a leader, how you conduct yourself, what is your bearing? How do you carry yourself in front of a group of people? So how I performed on the, the physical fitness field, that was very important, but how I performed and how I appeared in the classroom, in the lecture hall, uh, in military laboratory, all of those things were equally as important. And I had you looked to in your uniform. Correct. How I how I portrayed myself and how I represented the uniform was incredibly important. I know that it doesn't exist anymore, but correct me if I'm wrong. That there was a period of time, even when you applied for promotion and stuff, that a picture, a physical picture, was correct. part of the package. Correct. And and they they stopped doing that. But when I was coming up through the ranks it was the utmost important that you submitted a picture. And the picture was in our, our service C uniform, which is short sleeves uh, and trousers. And Marines, we like to keep our, 
our shirts very, very tight and close to the body. And, and there was almost an art form uh, on how to get that shirt wrinkle-free, uh, probably involving some chip clips or something like that uh, in the back. Uh, but it, it evolved over time. But bottom line is how you wore the uniform, how you looked in that picture was a factor that the promotion boards and the selection boards considered. You know, again, they don't do that anymore, but that was, that was something that was uh, very important and stressed very uh, frequently as I was coming up through the ranks. So is it fair to say that whether self-imposed or not, that you put an enormous amount of pressure to maintain a physical standard in terms of your physical fitness and your appearance? Absolutely, that is very fair to say. So, and we will get to it in the next segment, and we're gonna talk about what happened when he got injured and what that was like in terms, how it affected you know, his physical capabilities and how he felt about his appearance. So stay with us, and in part two, we're actually gonna discuss how the injury happened and the initial days and weeks, and then we're gonna talk about how we rehab that have come back from there and how our perspective has shifted in terms of goals, in terms of what's important, and in terms of how we approach our training. I can't wait to relive all this. <laughs> Thank you.